Alright, so in this video we're going to look at linear regression uh, uh, using the least squares method to find the equation of a line given some data points. So here we have the equation uh, y hat equals a plus bx. Now you know that a linear equation you're used to seeing this y equals mx plus b. But if you notice that for the least squares it's y hat equals a plus bx. Okay. Well if we look at y equals mx plus b you know that m here is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Okay. And this is the exact same thing, it's just written different. See, here is the y-intercept, and here is your slope. Okay, so it's just switched around. Okay, <clears throat> so to find the equation here, well, n is the number of data pairs you have. Okay, how many, however many sets of data points you have, that's n. The slope, b, the number in front of x, is this formula here. It's not as bad as it looks. It's uh, n equals the sum of x times y minus the sum of x times the sum of y over n times the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared. And the, and the intercept, the y-intercept, the a, is a equals y bar minus b times x bar. Well, where y bar is the mean of the y data values, x bar is the mean of the x data values, okay, of the x coordinates. And this is the mean of the y coordinates. Now, let's talk a little bit about this and this. These are not the same thing. Okay, this one here, the sum of x squared, that means you square each x value and then you sum them up. Okay, and the sum of x squared means that you sum the x values first and then you square that number. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example and see what we get. All right, so here's our example. It says the job market is being studied in several neighborhoods. Let X represent the total number of jobs in a given neighborhood and let Y represent the number of entry-level jobs in the same neighborhood. A sample of six neighborhoods gave the following information. And that's the information in this table. So 16 is the total number of jobs in the neighborhood, and 2 are entry level. 33 jobs, 33 total jobs in the neighborhood, 3 are entry level, okay, and so on. Now, if we look at this, this is our x, there's our y. So one thing that we can do is, well, before we get to the write the least least squares equation. <clears throat> you can do a scatter plot and I'll just do one real quick. Uh, and something like that. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 and 50, okay? And because you can see we have to go up to 50 here for the X, and then for the Y we have to go up to 9, so we can just do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, okay? And, you know, you can make, this would look better on graph paper, you know? So, you know, you can plot the point 16, 2, so that's about right in there. Uh, 33, 3, there's 33 is about right in here, and it's a little bit above. 
56, and that would be that point. Uh, 28, 5, that would be about right in there. 59, would be about right there. And 25, 3, would be about right in there. Okay, and so this would, this is kind of what our data would look like. And, you know, we're going to try to find a line that fits that. You know, something like that. What's the equation of that line? <clears throat> All right. So let me get rid of this. And let's see what we've got. Okay, so if you remember our formula, Okay, so, so here's our formula for B. Let's find B. Okay, we'll find uh, Y bar and X bar after we find B. Okay, so here's our formula. So you can see that we need the sum of X, Y. We need the sum of X, the sum of Y. We need the sum of X squared. Okay. And then when we find the sum of x, that's this, we'll square that value also. So what I like to do uh, is, you know, just make a chart. So let's make a chart. So I've got x, I've got y, okay, so I'll write my x values down, 16, 33, 50, 28, 50, and 25. And then write down your y, 2, 3, 6, 5, 9, 3. All right, so remember, I need the sum of x, y. So I need a column x times y. So all I'm going to do here is 16 times 2, that gives me 32, 33 times 3, 99, 50 times 6 is 300, 28 times 5 is 140, 50 times 9 is 450, and 25 times 3 is 75. Okay. Then, okay, so that's going to take care of the sum of x, y. Now, remember, I need the sum of x squared. So I need an x squared column. So that means I'm going to square each of these values. So 16 squared is 256. 33 squared is 1089. 50 squared is 2,500. 28 squared is 784. 50 squared, 2,500. And 25 squared is 625. Okay? So, <clears throat> remember, okay, remember our formula is B equals N sum of xy minus the sum of x times the sum of y over n times the sum of x squared minus the sum of x, all of that squared. And a is equal to y bar minus b times x bar. So I need all of this. All right, so let's see, the sum of x, so I'm gonna add all of these values up. So the sum of x would be 202, Let me extend these on down. Okay. The sum of y, we'll cram that in there, the sum of y would be 28, 
add this column up. Then I need to add this column, the sum of xy. Okay, so the sum of xy is 1096. And then I sum this column. The sum of x squared is 77.54. Okay. All right. And then n. Okay. Remember, we need n also. Okay. Well, n, that's the number of data points. So n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 6 data points. It's not, n is not 12. Okay. You don't count each number. It's how many pairs. Okay. And there's 6. So n is equal to 6. So now, well, let's calculate b. So b is equal to, okay, that's the sum of xy, okay, which is 1096, minus the sum of x, which is 202, times the sum of y, which is 28, okay, oh, sorry, 6 times that, n times the sum of xy, so 6 times the sum of xy, okay, and that's over n, which is 6, times the sum of x squared, which is 7754, minus the sum of x, the 202, and that is squared. And then we would have to punch this into our calculator. And let's see what we get. Okay, so we get b is equal to 1.61. Okay. All right, so there's b. And, and remember what we're looking for. We're looking for y hat is a plus bx. So we found b. Now we need to find a. Okay. So if you remember, a is this the mean of the y values, and we need the mean of the x values. Okay. So let's find. Let's find x bar first. So remember, the mean of the x values, well, you just add all the x values up and divide by however many there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So we already have the sum of the x values. So that's going to be 202 divided by 6. And we get 33.67. I'll just round it to two decimal places. If you're working this, you might not want to round, you know, and, you know, plug everything into there, into here, you know, especially when you multiply it times B, but I'm rounding. <clears throat> okay. And then Y bar, well, we just add up all the Y values and divide it by one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we have the sum of the y values already. So that's 28 over 6. So 28 over 6, that gives me 4.67. Rounded it to two decimal places. Okay. All right. So what is A? Well, A is y bar minus b times x bar. Well, that's going to be 4.67 minus b, which is 0 0.161. See, we calculated b times x bar, 33.67. Okay. And then we punch this into our calculator. And we get A, okay, so we get negative 0.751.
I rounded to three decimal places. All right. So now we're ready to write the equation of our line. Okay. So remember, once again, y hat is a plus b x. So we get y hat is equal to a, which is negative 0.751, plus b, which is 0.161 times x. So there's our equation for that data using the least squares method. Okay. Now, what they want us to do in the second part of the problem is for a neighborhood with 40 jobs, how many are predicted to be entry level? Well, all we do there, the 40 here, that's our x value. So we can just take 40, plug it into here, and calculate the y. So I have y hat, and I'm going to evaluate that at 40. I'm plugging 40 in for x. So that's negative 0.751 plus point, point 0.161 times 40. And so we get, punch that into your calculator, and we get about 5.689 entry level jobs okay all right so I hope this helped uh, <clears throat> don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos and thanks for watching